What's going on guys, welcome back to my personal channel, welcome back to another Transfer Daily video for you guys today. This is one of the last Transfer Daily videos that we're going to be doing because the window should be closing tomorrow. And in this video we're going to be talking about a topic that I haven't really spoken about in a couple of days but I know it's been starting to get more and more steam. And with all the match day stuff I didn't really have enough time to do this video but I've got the time to do it today. And we're going to be talking about Jorginho potentially going to Arsenal or Arsenal taking yet another one of our hand-me-downs but... I don't want this transfer to go through. I don't think it would be good for us in the long term. And I actually think it would be beneficial for Arsenal in the long term. So I'm going to discuss it in this video today. But before I start this video, as per usual, if you haven't done so, smash the like and subscribe button. Hit the bell notification button as well to be the first guy to know whenever we release new content. And yeah, check out all the other previous content I've done as well. Check out the Crystal Palace review. And in fact, speaking of Crystal Palace, we might as well just start off with that. It was our most comfortable performance of the season. We did struggle to break down Crystal Palace in the first half, but we knew it was a case of persistence with the way the game was flowing. P Crystal Palace weren't really trying to do much rather than sit deep and maybe conserve a draw and try and hit us on the counter, but we were comfortable. I said we were controlled, and I also said that we didn't really look too sloppy on the ball. We always looked like we had the intent to cause damage. It was just Crystal Palace had a great defensive shape on us for the first half, but it was a solid first half performance. They tried to transition into attack very well, and Jorginho and Kante just cut out every single chance that they had. Even if they got a bit further than them two, Thiago Silva and Kurt Zuma were just rocks at the back. And that's the first performance I've had in a good couple months where I've actually been confident in our defence. I mean, granted, Mendy didn't have much to do, so I'm not going to speak too much about his performance. They had zero shots on target and I think four shots overall. But half of the reason for that is because of how solid our defence was. Anytime there was an issue, anytime there was a ball that was trying to be fed to Wilfred Zaha, it was Kurt Zuma and Thiago Silva cutting it out. And they had a lot of great blocks, great interceptions. And it was an optimistic performance from our defence. Like I said... It took persistence to try and break them down. Ben Chilwell finding a free space on the left-hand side and smashing it in for 1-0 before getting an assist very soon afterwards for Kurt Zuma, who, like I've said so many times, if there's one thing that's going to change our luck with aerial ability, is going to be Kurt Zuma because this guy towers over absolutely everybody. 3-0, 4-0, both came through Jorginho pens. There was the obvious little disagree disagreement between Tammy, Jorginho and Aspi, but it was nothing. Aspilicueta squashed that real quick. Jorginho scored the penalty and everyone moves on. No one's trying to make too big of a scenario about it. There isn't really much to talk about in it. So, we just move. Jorginho with the two goals, Zuma scored, and I think it was, yeah, Ben Chilwell as well for the first goal. But, like we were saying, the topic of this video is why, Jorginho, why we should not be allowing Jorginho to go to our now Arsenal aka card declined FC or as we all know as the Chelsea retirement home are struggling to sign midfielders as per usual they've been interested in Hussam Awa over the summer which I really hope I didn't butcher the same way I butcher Werner's name on a daily basis but yeah Hussam Awa and Thomas Partey have been two big names on Arsenal's list of three but as per usual Arsenal can't afford the money for either of them Leon have ended the negotiations after they refused to accept their £50 million valuation for the midfielder. And with Thomas Partey, that one's just been dragging for months. And Arsenal fans have been trying to make GoFundMe pages to try and help with the transfer. They've been trying to spam all the Arsenal ads on the YouTube channel to try and push a bit more revenue down their way. Because things have really got that bad over at Arsenal. And now they're looking back at the team at West London. And they're trying to look at yet another Chelsea player that they think can improve their squad. Surprise, surprise. And this one is Jorginho. Now... It has been no in, it's been no surprise that we have been trying to sell Jorginho. And there have been a couple clubs that were interested in him. Roma wanted his signature. Uh, Napoli wanted to bring him back as well. But the problem with both of those deals is that they couldn't match our valuation for the midfielder. And now with us still in the lookout for a DM and us trying to clear out the wage bill because Jorginho is on those 110k a week wages, which for someone who has fallen down the pecking order is a bit too much. And that's where I can understand it from the club's point of view. We are trying to sell Jorginho. And I've always said for the right offer, I would take it because a player of Jorginho's quality cannot be sitting on the bench week in and week out. He's been very professional throughout all of this, 
but I still don't know throughout the whole season how long that's going to last. But Arsenal are now interested in him because now their midfield options are looking bare. And regardless of us clearing the wage bill, we should not be thinking about trying to give Jorginho over to our rivals because this is actually going to be a signing that could help Arsenal. Now, if we look through their midfield, their midfield is weaker than a shot of WKD. They've got Joe Willock, they've got Meza Ozil if he's not playing Fortnite, they've got Mohamed El Sideways, Granit Xhaka, Guendouzi who they've been trying to sell as well and Ceballos aka just a fidget spinner that is not the strongest of midfields and even if Arteta is a bit of a genius tactically he is going to be struggling with that midfield and it's no surprise that they're looking to us because our midfield stack trying to take another one of our options we should not be the ones to strengthen our London rivals Jorginho may have fallen down the pecking order, but that doesn't mean it's washed or anything like that. It doesn't mean he's past its best. It's not like when we were selling Petr Cech or David Luiz or Willian. This is a player still in his prime years, and under the right manager, they can get the best out of him. And I do think Mikel Arteta would be that manager. That's the worrying thing. Right now, that midfield has zero creativity. If you watch the Arsenal match against Sheffield United, they struggle to break them down for long periods. And they're missing a player that could control the game, start attacks, bring in key interceptions game after game after game and also help the team with the transition from defence to attack as well as marshalling that entire midfield. All of that is just Jorginho in general and I know Mikel Arteta would be able to get the best out of him because he would just make the team flow through them. And I'm going to take this back a few years if you guys remember back to 2018 when, uh, what's his name, Pep Guardiola and, and I say sorry but more just Chelsea at the time. City and Chelsea were both fighting over Jorginho's signature and Pep Guardiola wanted this guy for time. He was really trying to pursue with the transfer and the only reason why Jorginho picked Chelsea over, over Arsenal was because Maurizio Sarri was coming to Chelsea as well at the time. So... That's, that's one factor. The fact, the reason why I'm bringing this point out to you is because Mikel Arteta was the assistant manager at the time. And with how big Mikel Arteta was and how key was that Manchester City side, he would know exactly how Pep Guardiola wanted to use him. He would know the exact instructions and the type of role that he'd want to play in that side. And he will just bring that exact same tactics into that Arsenal side. And I know their tactics have been poor over the last few over the last few weeks that everyone's calling him the Spanish Tony Pulis. But it's because of how how poor that midfield is, if we're being honest. Do not give them Jorginho, because I promise you, Jorginho is going to strengthen that midfield. He is going to actually be the metronome that that team is lacking. And even if it is a loan deal. If he does well there, he'll end up potentially wanting to come back. He'll end up potentially wanting to stay there as well. Also taking into the fact that we aren't playing him long enough. He, is, he has fallen down the pecking order. The reason why I still want to keep him, even though I'm saying that point, I don't want to come across as too hypocritical. It's because look at how cramped this season is going to be. Everyone is trying to rush this season so we get back in time for the Euros in June. There are going to be, there's especially around the December, January, February period, there's going to be times where we're playing two or three, or probably not four, but two or three matches a week. Jorginho, I think, even if he isn't going to be in our strongest starting 11, he is going to be the sort of player that will be getting regular game time. He's also our vice captain as well, which means that he's going to bring a lot of experience into the squad. And also, that Arsenal team lacks serious leaders. Like, Aubameyang's a good captain, but he's more captain based on ability. He's not really the guy shouting, marshalling that entire Arsenal squad. Jorginho's going to do that. And I do think it's a smart decision from them trying to sign him at this point. But we've given them too much anyway. We've given them over the last few years. We've given them Petr Cech. We've given them David Luiz. We've given them Willian. Granted, they've all been past their prime when we, when we actually gave them to the club. But this isn't the case of Jorginho. And like I said, this isn't a retirement home move. Arsenal are a retirement home. If they want Jorginho, in my opinion, they can wait three or four years until he's past his best. And even in our case, I feel like we'd be getting rid of the only guy who can play in defensive midfield and actually stick in that position as well. I've spoken plenty of times about Mateo Kovacic and Kante, and I get that they can both play that defensive midfield position. But they're both ball progressors. They're both box-to-box -box midfielders by nature. They're not going to sit deep behind the defence. Jorginho... I get he's not the most athletic of players, and there is weaknesses to his game as well. 
but he is actually going to sit deep in that position. He's going to be the metronome at the back. Kante is going to try and push forward with the ball more. It's going to take a lot more to take that out of his game. Same thing with Mateo Kovacic. He gets the ball, he drives forward. Now, the, now I won't say Kovacic would lose the ball a lot, but the reason why that doesn't work is because if he does lose the ball, there's just an open gap in front of the defence. There's no one else marshalling it. That's why you need Jorginho in that pitch. You need someone who isn't going to try to bomb forward every single time. That's why I don't think we should be getting rid of Jorginho. Even with the decline of Arsenal and with them falling further and further out the top four with each passing season, this is the sort of signing that could potentially push them further up. And they do look like in a promising position. They are slightly on the up. I will say that with the FA Cup win and everything. And they actually have a smart manager other than Unai, than Unai Emery. who was just a joke for like the last year of his reign there. They've got a manager who can progress the club well if you give him the right tools for it. Make no doubt about it. If you sell them Jorginho, it is one of the right moves for them. I hope we don't make this move. Honestly, it would be another Chelsea player that I would have to see in that bummy Arsenal shot. Even though I don't really care too much about seeing Willie in there because he was a bit bummy for us over the last few years as well. Seeing Petr Cech in an Arsenal shirt looked weird as hell and I still am not used to it. Same thing with David Luiz. I've seen him lift, both of them lift the Champions League under Chelsea and now I'm seeing him in Arsenal shirts getting knocked out by Olympiacos. It's peak man. I don't want to see that decline for Jorginho. The only way that I can genuinely see this transfer happening is if we actually have a proper DM that's ready to come in in the next 24 to 48 hours. I know we're interested in Thomas Party, but I know that's just interest right now. And I don't really think now's the time for interest. Now we've got to be a bit quicker with transfers if we actually want it because there's under 24 hours left of the transfer window. If Thomas Party can come in, Maybe I wouldn't be too against doing a loan deal, but I, st I still would only have it as a short loan or something like that because I think long term this isn't the right move for us. Also, if you keep him there, it just shows exactly the type of player that, that um, Arteta would need if they end up getting him and he ends up succeeding there. And that would just, just give them the right profile of player to look for for next year. We shouldn't be doing anything to help these guys unless we are bending them over a barrel. And I'm saying if we're asking 50 million from clubs like Roma and Napoli, we we should be asking for 70 million for Jorginho. Do you want to know why? Rival tax. It just is what it is. I don't care. We should not be being, we should be being ruthless as hell, especially when it comes to Arsenal. Just for payback for the FA Cup final. I'm salty like that. I want this to happen. I, I don't want this to happen. I don't want to see us sell Jorginho. I don't want to see us loan him to another rival because I feel like it will just be another mistake that we make. But guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Do you guys want to see Jorginho at Arsenal or not? Where do you guys want to see Rudiger go? I will speak about the rest of the other potential departures tomorrow. I'm going to do a big video on that, so check it out. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G, and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care, and up the chills.